Hello people, how's it going? This is Johnny again and in today's video I'd like to talk about um, uh, the drums that I use actually. I think I haven't done that yet and I guess it would make more sense to do that. I also get a lot of questions about it lately and so here we are. I'm pretty sure there are so many things that I forget to talk about because there's so much you could talk about when it comes to drums so forgive me, bear with me and um, if I don't answer any of your questions then feel free to just ask in the comments and I sure I'm sure I'll I'll answer that eventually so as you can see what I'm using lately is native instruments modern drummer I really like modern drummer actually um this isn't everything that comes in modern drummer. Modern drummer actually comes with two uh, drum kits. So the sparkle kit, which is great for anything more pop, rockish, and something in the medium heavy area of music, if you will. Um, yeah, and then the white kits, which I'm using here. This is really great for anything uh, in the harder realm of music so from grunge to prog metal you can get anything with this drum kit uh, if you know how to mix the different styles but this is just extremely worse versatile and i really really like it i also really like the sound of it it's very big it's it has edge to it it has character and what's also so great about it no matter how crazy you go in the mixing it always kind of sounds natural and I really like that. I really like that. With um, Superior Drummer and also the Metal Foundry, which I used to use, I always found that they can easily sound fake. And I never really liked that. And also the reason why I'm using this one right now is <laughs> nobody else seems to do. <laughs> Really, when you check the forums, then all that people talk about is Superior superior Drummer or East Drummer or Stephen Slate comes up a couple of times, sometimes also Addictive Drums, but I never saw anybody come up with Modern Drummer. And I thought that's pretty cool because also back then when I switched to this one, I thought I don't really want to sound like everybody else. I, I want to get a little bit of my own vibe in there. And since I don't have the means to get a real drum kit and to record them myself, then switching to a different drum VSTi that barely anybody else uses is my best bet. But I, uh, I can imagine that would change now after this video. Uh, but yeah, you may also know before Modern Drummer, I used Studio Drummer on the albums Chronicles and Reflection and Studio Drummer also comes with three kits. The Garage Kit, gar Garage Kit, uh, however you want to pronounce that, um, which is good for for something more vintage or rougher kind of styles. The Session Kit is again more popish, rockish along those lines and the Stadium Kit is what I used on those albums. It's a really big heavier metal sounding uh, drum kit this one sounds actually <laughs> yeah uh, th this is kind of weird a bit of paradox the stadium kit sounds more modern than actually modern drummer <laughs> uh, so with the stadium kit you can get more of this or you can get closer to a more modern drum mix along the lines of periphery and tester act and whatnot um but of course modern drummer can do it too it just has still this little bit of an old school edge to it that i personally really like now let's talk about the drums themselves and how i set them up um so in modern drummer the the whole drum kit is basically fixed you cannot change the crashes in here or the cymbals you cannot change the toms you cannot change the kick only for the snare you have a few options and to some that may be a little too restricting too limited 
Um, that's perfectly fine. But I find this drum kit is so good. I don't even need any extra stuff. This is just one really solid library that lets me do a whole bunch of different stuff. So I I am personally really happy with this one. I, I don't think I'm going to switch to anything else anytime soon. And if I did, I would consider BFD3. Uh, because people also barely talk about that one, but I checked it out. Um, some demo videos and also tried out the demo, although the demo version is so useless because it limits you to 30 minutes per session and in 30 minutes you cannot get anything done. Okay, in 30 minutes I just figured out how to set it up for multi-channeling and then it doesn't save the settings. So when I want to load it again for a new session, then I have to set up set it up again for multi-channeling and then I want to try out m mixing it to get the sound I want and, uh, and then the 30 minutes are up again. So yeah. People at BFD or the makeups of BFD, if you by chance uh, listen to this, please do something about the demo version. Give me two weeks with the full features, okay? Then I can test it out correctly. But 30 minutes is useless. Okay, in any case. So yeah, the drums. As you can see, I use snare B. That sounds really good for me. Snare I A sounds kind of weird. And what, let's just check this out in the mix. Uh, this one would definitely need a lot more post EQ. Snare C is also totally weird. It has this distinct uh, ringing in the 200 hertz area. It's kind of tuned much lower and has this uh, clear defined frequency going on. I don't like that. Uh, snare B is just a very good all-rounder. Okay. So as you can see here, I put the snare a bit higher in the room mics as anything else in here because I really like the snare sound in the room mics. Let's go, just go to the mixer section here. Um, especially that room uh, mono mic, that sounds so thrashy. I, I love it. It's wickedly good. And you still heard um, that right crash going on clearly in the overheads. Now what that was about, I'm going to show you in a bit. Um, so people have also been asking me if I use some effects in modern drama itself. And as you can see, yes, I do. Um, mostly just a transient designer. You know, just, just get a, a bit more control on the peaks, give it a bit more attack for a bit more punch and... Oh, this, uh, this is not a lot of low uh, sustain reducing here on the kick. Um, usually I put it somewhere around here to get it a bit tighter. Also on the snare, just just a touch. And also some tape saturation to, to get it a bit fatter sounding. I had again just a little bit of transient, just upping the sustain. The toms, I also put a bit of EQ on them, as you can see here, to, uh, to boost the fundamental frequency of every tom and also the the upper range a little bit to uh to equalize their distinct attack because they can sound and feel a little different on the on the attack the way the the stick sounds like hitting on the on the tom sounds a little different on each so i try to even that out as well and also i do the panning of the toms in here and then all the toms just go to one s What the? Why is this... Uh, sometimes it's not... Doing what it's supposed to do. So anyways, all the toms just go to one stereo... Uh, tom channel. Here in the output section. There it is. I still hate this thing. Oh, it's such a pain to set up. But now it works and I don't think I'm going to touch it. 
uh, touch it ever again. Uh, ah, it's such a hassle. Okay, so basically then in my mixer, in my DAW mixer, uh, all the toms are on one stereo channel. And then I do the rest of the EQ and compression on there. So I don't compress the toms individually, just on the bus a little bit, just to to make it feel like a unit. And so they don't jump totally out of control when you have when you hit two toms at the same time. The peaks and the volume can go like crazy. So I rather compress um, the snares, uh, the toms together on that on that uh, bus channel. And then the overheads, also again a little bit just of the transients and the overhead mono mic I just mute. I don't really like that one too much. And for what uh, the overhead mono, yeah, that's what I said, right? For whatever reason, it's panned all the way to the right. <laughs> In any case, not important. Then there's a room stereo mic. Also, I don't put any effects on there. And then the room mono mic. So yeah, that that's basically my setup. Uh -huh. And also with the snare and kick, you have some options here with the top mic and the bottom mic. On the snare, I mostly use the top mic, of course, that has most of the punch and the body and the nice high ends bite to it. The bottom mic just adds a little bit of crackle and sizzle and that snare sound. I don't like to mix it in too much, otherwise it can sound really nasty. What's also cool with the snare is you can control the bleeds of the kicks and the toms going into the snare. And I like to just put a little bit of that in. So it's still, it, it adds this, this touch of naturalness to the whole drum sound. When you have a little bit of that bleed going into the snare. It's not something you hear very specifically at the end. But it's something you just feel. You, you would notice it when it's gone. But it's also not important enough that I gave you an A-B comparison now. Yeah. And then the kick, you also have inside mic and outside mic, and I like to put them about the same level. The inside mic has a lot of that high-end click, and the outside, a lot of the more mid-rangey area. And I just like both on this one. And then what's also interesting, though, about the kick, um, you get a dampened option, half open and open. So with those, you can get a bit different kick sounds. The dampened sounds a bit more modern, very uh, more smooth on the top end. I really like the half open though. That one sounds a bit thrashier. Let's check that one out just for the funds. Ah, uh, perhaps in this mix you don't hear that much of a difference. Uh, I can definitely see that, but when you try it out for yourself, there is a difference. And I really like the half open, actually, most of the time. And the completely open, that one sounds really crazy. <laughs> As you can hear, that, that upper range click and flabbiness in the mid-range, it's just going nuts. It's so good for something more thrashy sounding. It's, oh, I love it. I really, really do. Yeah, that's that. And one other thing I could tell you is I actually open up Modern Drummer or I load it up twice. Now, why is that? Now here it gets interesting. See in Modern Drummer, the crashes are a little bit weird. As you can see, this one I completely muted. First of all, that crash here on the left, you actually hear that, you actually hear it on the right. So although visually it's on the left, uh, you hear it on the right. And it's also the other way around with the right symbol. You see it on the right, but that one you hear on the left. Uh, I don't know if that's some kind of bug. Uh, well, you gotta work with it. Anyways, um, so this symbol here, it sounds like a normal symbol. Just the left 
bright symbol. I really like this one. It sounds very nice. But this one sounds a bit more like choked, almost like a bit of a China thingy or something more special, not really like the crash that I need on the right. I like to have a normal brighter crash on the left and a darker crash on the right. But I'm missing exactly that one. So what I did, I just took this one out of the overhead and room mix so you don't hear this one here at all. I can click it all I want, you won't hear it. But this one you hear, of course. So I load up Modern Drummer a second time and I take everything out of the overhead and room mix so you don't hear any of this stuff later on. Because with the MIDI going inside here as well, everything in here is being triggered. But I don't want to hear any of this. So I take it out of those mixes. And also here in the mixer, uh, yeah, basically, uh, let, let me start over. What I want to get out of this one is I want to create a right darker crash. So to do that, I need to take everything else out of the picture. And this one, as you can see, I just tuned a little bit lower. And I also set the overhead to, to another channel and also my mixer is on another channel. And then in my DAW mixer, I just flip the channels. So the left is on the right and the right on the, is on the left. And then I basically have my darker right crash. And I'm pretty sure I just flew over this. Uh, if you didn't get that, I'm really sorry. Um, this has also been a lot of fiddling for me to, to get this to where I want. And then this crash, here you can hear it. It sounds a bit more like a China to me. I, so I can't use this as my powerful crash on the right side. So I use this more as a, another left uh, uh, China along with this one. So yeah, but basically again, I took everything out of the room and overhead so I don't hear those later on in the mix. All I want from this kit is that symbol and that symbol, nothing else. And then in the mixer, I have my overheads and my room mics. Uh, I solo those and I give those exactly the same settings as in my other kit. And then those go to their own overhead and room channel. And then on those in the DAW mixer, I flip the, the channels. So I flip the left and right channel. Yeah, it, it requires a lot of fiddling and a lot of patience and a high tolerance for frustration. <laughs> Can be kind of difficult to mess around with, but just try it out. If you have to drive to really get that sound that you want, then you will figure it out eventually. What else could I talk about with the drums? Well, I pretty much went over my my drum setup, I don't use any of the attack hole and the K stuff, I just leave it natural for the most part. It's just, I like simple setups. Simple and effective. That is my approach to pretty much everything. Also my general drum mix, the way it's set up is very simple really. Um, but it's also, that, that gives me the ability to make quick, uh, subtle changes in order to get different styles in the mix. I already tried this out. I, I just for myself, I tr uh, made a, I tried using the same kit, this one kit and mix it in different styles from grunge to prog metal. And what I noticed is I always used the same mixing setup, but I just changed the compression a little bit, changed the EQ a little bit. And it just went more and more from rough too overproduced and it's kind of interesting that's i guess then this is one kind one piece of wisdom you can take out of this messed up video um try to go for a simple approach a simple setup you don't have to go elaborately complicated on your mixes to get a great mix 
I guess you already saw that in my last video when I talked about my drum bus processing. Um, I already showed you it's just compression, EQ, saturation. Compression, EQ, saturation. That's pretty much uh, everything that's going on. And then, yeah, just, uh, I'm just going to repeat myself from here, so I'm just going to shut up. Um, there was one other thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, yeah, um, you can also get some really interesting results when you play around with the tuning of the drums. For example, on um, our latest album, Inspiring Nightmare, for most of the album, I just cut the tuning as it is, so completely natural. Just here sometimes with the tom, I, I fiddle around a little bit with the tunes, so it, it's more in tune with the guitars. And... And this, uh, oh, th this is complicated. Um, don't get frustrated when you can't figure out how to tune your drums. This also took me quite some time to, to get the ear, to train my ear for that, because drums are very different from guitars. <laughs> Duh. Um, <laughs> um, because li listening to a specific note to a clear frequency that's ringing that you can determine to tune, it's quite difficult on the drums, I find. And it took me some time to get the ear for that in order to tune the drums according to the guitars. This requires quite a bit of practice, but don't let that hold you back. Just practice, okay? Eventually you will get there. Have patience and just go on practicing. Uh, in any case, I digress. Um, on your last album, Inspiring Nightmare, uh, the song Black Paradise, there I tuned all the shells lower. That's what giving that such a massive, huge and sluggish groove. That was the trick behind that. But basically the mixing was still the same. I barely, I just uh, tweaked it a little bit, of course, according to the lower tuning, but otherwise most of what you're feeling from that track is really just lower tuned drums. And then also on the song Against All Odds, there I tuned the drums a little bit higher to get a bit quicker and thrashy feel out of it. it and the mix was also not too different from the rest of the album, just tweaked it a little bit to, to fit the, the higher uh, tune uh, tuning and that, that was it. So really, don't be afraid to fill around with the with the tuning of your drums. That that can really do quite a lot of changes to to the feel that you bring across. Okay, what what else could I talk about? Help me out here, people. <laughs> if this was real time, I guess it could help me out, but uh, apparently it's not. Um, yeah, the stuff here on the side I never really use, although can also be a little interesting. But yeah, yeah, I, nah, I never really use those in my songs. One thing that comes to mind, the crashes. Um, you know, specifically the, the one that I use as left and right crash symbol. Those can sound a bit harsh on some upper frequencies between that 5 to 20k. Um, so I find I often have to surgically EQ those out. Here, as you can see, that of course, that, that this one right here is not too surgical, but still, there, there's some can be some potential nastiness. That's also why. This kit I consider more rough sounding. It has more edge to it. it. It doesn't sound clear and sparkly and beautiful. It does need a bit more work if you want to get get it there. But otherwise, it just has a lot of. Yeah, I, I'm just repeating myself again. <clears throat> edge. That's uh, that's the best word I can come up for this kit. It has a lot of edge and old school vibe and roughness to it and um, yeah yeah also the hi-hat can have some nasty ringing going on either you can use that to uh, to a great effect to get it more thrashy sounding get a lot of power from it 
or you just have to surgically EQ those frequencies out again to get it more silky and modern sounding. That's up to you. But again, th this drum kit has a lot of potential. You can get anywhere with it. Um, I, I guess for that matter, I could also um, upload that comparison I made, trying to get different mixes out of that one drum kit. It would definitely be interesting material to check out. I guess just to point out, you don't need a dozen of expansion packs in order to get the sound you want. You just need one good one. And then you need to know what you're doing. <laughs> okay, at this point I cannot really come up with anything else to say about my my general drums. Um, one more thing I guess, which I wanted to start this video off with. Uh, the drums themselves make about 70% of the final drum mix. So for example, I I've listened to mixes uh, where people used the avatar kit from Superior Drama and the kick simply didn't sound right. That Those kicks from that pack just aren't really made for metal and they need a whole bunch of post-processing in order to get them to sound anywhere decent. And I find when you have to take such drastic measures then it's simply not the right kick. And when you get into that kind of situation, perhaps you do need to uh, con <laughs> contemplate to to go for something else. But it's really something you shouldn't underestimate. Um, it's not always all in the mix. The your your source material is really really important. Okay, I guess this goes along the lines of the philo uh, philosophy. Don't fix it in the mix. Try to get it as good as possible from the very source. And having the right drum VSTI that suits your preference and your needs is essential. And I found mine. Now you just go out, check out different demos and find yours. I'm not sure if there's a demo version for Modern Drummer. Uh, I guess you could contact Native Instruments and ask them if they could do something like that. I mean, they do have some solid uh, uh, demos on their website, and that's what made me um, actually make the decision to to go for this one, because I could already hear the potential of the drums just from those uh, samples, from those demos, and then I just did the rest myself. So how could we wrap up this video? How could we sum it up in... 20 words or less. <laughs> Got that one? Uh, yeah. The drum kit you use is highly important for your final sound. You don't need a dozen of different drum uh, libraries to get what you want. You just need one or two really good ones that suit your needs and just go from there. And then also try to keep your setup simple but effective. I find that's it's a really good approach. And then from there, if you notice, okay, you're doing it simple and using your simplicity to the best effect, but you're still not quite getting what you want, then you can add to that. Okay, try out different techniques and tricks to get it to sound bigger or fatter or punchier or wherever you want to go. It's all, of course, also dependent on the situation. And um, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to leave it at that <laughs> and go back to sleep. If I didn't answer any question you might have, then please feel free to just ask in the comment section and I'll answer eventually. And yeah, then I hope I um, succeeded in wasting your time once again. And I will see you at the next time waster. And until then... Feel free to check out my channel for further nonsense and subscribe and check out our musical band camp and give us a like on Facebook and you'll find all the links in the description. Good night, everybody.